In this episode of Coffee with Coaches, we have a great topic. Everything, everything has to do with love, but here's a really interesting component that we're talking about today. We're talking about love, how important love is between people, but love is not just between two people or other people, but actually self-love is so important as well. So we're going to dig a little deeper into that as well. So join us for this journey into love, what it really um, is as far as from a neuro perspective, but also how important it is and, and really how, how fundamental it is for our well-being. So I'm Heike Fallon. I am a personal performance coach and I help my clients elevate their self-leadership to completely new levels, utilizing a brain-based approach. Awesome. I'm Shannon Pasolacqua and I help women heal after miscarriage. And also, we and we love to talk, love to talk. <laughs> we love to talk because that's what we do love to talk. We love to talk, but we love to talk about important topics that we are interested in because we're very passionate about science, but we also know has an impact on many of our clients and it has an impact in, um, you know, in, in people's life. And that's do what you want to know why we love to talk. Yeah. Because it connects us. Correct. Connection is one kind yeah. of love. Also, um, you know, it's it's the friendships that's we do need that. We do need there's different types of love. We go for it later, but one one combination or one love is friendships, and that's the connection component. And we've talked about um values, for example, in another episode. Mm -hmm. Um that you know, people with similar values feel also more connected. And but the friendship that develop is very, very important and a component of love because here's a cool part. I'm gonna start with some neuroscience. Um love actually they can they can see in brain imaging what areas fire and light up when we feel love. And mm -hmm. that doesn't need to be the sexual intimacy and and right. passion. It, it it's even you know when when just a, a hug or when we feel love by just you know even a, a, a text somebody sends you know we just feel loved um different areas of the brain light up and it shows the areas that light up is actually the part of the reward system so big dopamine <laughs> release surprise <Right. laughs> I think dopamine shows up in every one of our conversations. <laughs> Such a big one. So there's dopamine release in the in the reward center, which makes us feel better. And but also another big one that they found is um, oxytocin, and that is actually um, release in an area that is related to bonding and connection, attachment, attachment and, bonds, and connection yep. bonds. Yes. And so because those areas light up and there's the different chemical releases, love has so much more impact on us, on, on well-being, you know, because connection is super important for our well-being. We know it's a fundamental component of well-being is feeling connected, feeling belonging, mm -hmm. feeling, you know, being part of something. Um, we talked about community before. Um, but it's a it's a big part of our emotional well being, um, but even our physical health because nothing can be separated, and right. you know we can sometimes feel if we're not feeling love, we might feel it in our body, right? It might feel well. Angry. It lowers our cortisol. Yep, which is our stress. Mm -hmm. Is that a hormone? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so many hormones. Uh, can I piggyback off of your what you were saying? Yep. about connection and community. And so there's also another molecule in us called mm -hmm. tachykinin. Yep. Were you going to say that too? No, but I okay. know that's your favorite one. <laughs> I know we, I have talked about it before, but I, I think it's really important because tachykinin is a molecule in us that's raised when we are going through something difficult, trauma or whatever. Um, and it lowers or it, it increases our anxiety. It increases our irritability. But what they have found is what lowers tachykinin is connection. 
Mm -hmm. So when we connect with people, when we have community around us, when we have love, when we have social support, that lowers that molecule so that we can, it, it increases pretty much what I would say is our love. Um, and what I always relate that back to in my experience is grief. What I think is very interesting is a lot of us will pull away during grief. We've talked about that before. A lot of us will pull away during grief and when we're going through something difficult and it turns out what we need in reality is connection. Yep. And what we need is to be surrounded. And it doesn't have to be like an intimate love, right? It doesn't need to be, you know, we'll talk about this later, a passionate love or whatever. But when we connect with people who have been through a similar experience, it helps validate our feelings and it helps validate our experience and it helps lower our tachykinin. It helps lower our anxiety. It helps us on the healing path. So I, I just always think that's very interesting. Yes. I love that you said that. Um, love is, can be very healing. <laughs> yes. And, 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 and what's hard is our society is for the majority, our society pulls away from things that are difficult. But in other societies, when you're going through something difficult, when you're going through grief, they come together because mm -hmm. they know that when you come together and you experience that love, it helps us heal. Yep. And when I went through all of my miscarriages, I didn't have that community support. I didn't have, you know, my husband was very supportive, but I needed more of a community that uh, of people who understood what I had been through which is why I created Miscarriage Warriors, yeah. but you need a community, someone like people to turn to, to help experience that, that healing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's also why during the pandemic, it's been so challenging yeah. for a lot of people because whatever community some were in yeah. and it can be, you know, their sports group, their church, yeah. their whatever arts and craft group, <laughs> whatever you do, you yeah. know, whatever you're part of, um, wasn't happening. And so people were missing community. And oftentimes also, you know, families couldn't get together because you couldn't mm -hmm. travel, you couldn't do right. anything. So huge component of the uh, really skyrocketing mental health component that we're seeing now was lack of community, lack of community, lack, lack of connecting. And it's, Yes, I connected a lot with people online. That's how we originally met, right? right. Yeah, our, yeah. In our coaching community, which was meeting always online, um, which helped. Mm -hmm. But there is a total different level of in-person connecting. And um, and as we know, uh, the hugs are important. And particularly if we hug just that little extra second longer. <laughs> I think what is Well, the, what and I think the science 20? says... 20, 20 second hugs yep. will help lower. So what happens with a 20 second hug? And I always say to my friends, I'm like, don't make it awkward. We don't need to be weird about this. But the 20 second hug helps regulate your, um, your system. So you're kind of connecting with the person that you're hugging and it lowers your cortisol levels and it helps again, regulate your, Set your blood pressure, I think. I just, you know, my husband and I will joke about it where we're like, okay, let's start counting. <laughs> timer. Start the timer. <laughs> well, that's it. Uh, with those studies, obviously it's average. Somebody might get faster that that feeling. Um, but yeah, no, that's one. And I know I shared it before. It's one thing that we started a habit um, as the whole family was home due to being, um, yeah. you know, kind of all online and, you know, schools and everything closed, we ended up having this habit of whenever we cross each other <laughs> in like little breaks to hug each other. So we gave so many hugs, um, which wasn't necessarily intentional. It was just kind of like, you know what? <laughs> Everybody was kind of missing a little more connection, feeling a little bit more loved and, and needing a little bit more. And so we added that because other parts, you know, because we're taken away, we're taken away, we couldn't, you know, hang out and, and see our friends all the same way as we did before. So 
I think the the pandemic just has shown so even more drastically how important love is for our well being, emotionally, physically, socially. Um, mm -hmm. We need it. We need yeah. it. And so here's the thing. I cultivated it a little bit more with um, the hugs, you know, in the hallway, and we kept it up. Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely more hugging still going on than before. <laughs> BC, Good. BC. But there's other things how we can really cultivate more love. And and obviously, we're not going into like marriage stuff right now, but it's it's <laughs> <laughs> it's we're not I mean, marriage therapists <laughs> no, but like like things like the act of kindness right it always sounds so little cheesy right but that's showing love you know just just even a smile sometimes can show mm -hmm. you know and and trigger emotions for the other person depending on what's happening so just the small gestures of of kindness and or you know voicing appreciation can go a long way more than we think and mm -hmm. um and and the person feels loved and i love it that um i don't know which is it the facebook social media where you can put like feeling loved you know you you when people oh, you know, yeah, it says yeah. feeling loved yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's Facebook where you can just click that little emotion emoji and then it, it actually says, you know, loved. feeling loved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In place of the, the actual emoji. So there there's things that how we can cultivate it. So act of kindness, showing appreciation, voicing appreciation. Uh again, hugging is a good one. Um, another thing that I've always really cared about is this quality time. Yes really spending time together. And um, I found um, that's, that's why I'm gone so much too. I believe when you're out of your environment, oftentimes to create quality time mm -hmm. is easier because you're not distracted by your normal daily routine stuff, like answering phones, checking something, doing laundry, yeah. what have you, right? So I love uh, I love traveling or, or doing something as far as not in the house for quality time, but, you know, obviously create, you don't have to do that. Creating quality time in the house is as far as, as important as well. So, but mm -hmm. spending quality time, being present and, and really. Right. You know, that's, that's what I was going to uh, say next was being present. And I think when we're, when we are more present and when we focus on being present, it helps intensify our connection and therefore our love, right? So I try to ask myself how I can be more present. You know, I, I ask myself that in the morning, how can I be present today? Um, or who needs me to be more present? Who needs well, me that. to um, have, who, who needs a little more love today? Um, and, you know, sometimes it's myself. Yeah. <laughs> self-love. We hadn't even covered that one yet. The self-love right. is so important. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, I think a great place to start is evaluating where you can add more, more love and more connection into your day, into your life. Um, I think it's really easy to get sidetracked and get comfortable with our relationships, um, our friendships, our, you know, our partners, our, our children, all of it. I think it's very easy to get comfortable. So I think if you challenge yourself and how can I add a little more, you know, a little more love today, a little more connection today, it doesn't have to be, you know, major, you know, it could just be like a little extra hug, a little extra, like, Hey, thanks for doing that for me. Or just a, just something small. Yeah, no, I I one hundred percent agree because we can very easy quickly get into just the oh yeah the rut of okay yeah this is what it is. we take it for granted and then you know for a bit something happens and we're like oh I wish I would have so yeah you know to really work on it on a daily basis and it is intentional we have to show up more intentional I do too in the morning have my in my morning routine have um uh a section where i think of what what do i want to intentionally work on today or focus on 
And yeah, this can be part of, of uh, really paying attention. When do I, can I be more present or how can I give more love? And mm -hmm. but I do want to touch on to the self-love. I think that is super important. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, I caught myself too. I would love to. I love that. God, so much love. But um, if we don't love ourselves, it's very hard to love somebody else. Yes. Self-love is just really a fundamental component first. Mm -hmm. And that requires work too. It requires to be really honest yeah. with yourself and, and look at where are we too critical maybe? Where do we have limiting beliefs? Where mm -hmm. do we maybe not also when we don't love, you, love ourselves, do we let other people love us? <laughs> You know, where do we build that it's build up the walls, wall, which I know you, you've talked about it too, particularly with um going through grief. The problem is of that. Yeah, well, there's there's two things I was gonna touch on there because it's interesting. I've been thinking a lot about that in the last couple of days. Um, but the grief, we build up walls very, you know, very quickly because we don't want to let people in. It's it's hard to be vulnerable. Um, and part of my practice that I do with the women that I work with after a miscarriage, one of the things I, I ask them to do for homework is if they are still with their partner to work on every day, a 20 second hug, yeah. because it is very easy to push someone away. It is very easy to say, I, I can't handle, I can't do it right now. Like, I pushed my husband away during grief and, and he let me, mm -hmm. he let me push him away because he thought I needed more space. And what we actually needed was more time together. So just from my own experience, I know that we need to come together and build that connection, which again is, is really, it's, it's difficult. Um, but going back to the self-care I've been thinking about it a lot recently because I've been giving myself a hard time and been very critical. My hormones are way out of whack and my body's changing and I'm like, what's going on? And I have been so critical of my body and I have been so critical of the things that are going on. And I'm like, I need, I need to stop because if I can't love myself, I'm not letting anyone else around me love me. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to stop and start loving myself. And that's another thing that I ask my women to do is after having a miscarriage, we, we blame our bodies and we really can, can start being very critical of ourselves and our bodies. And I ask them to stop and every day, thank their body or at least acknowledge like that their body is is there for them and to start working on loving themselves again. Yeah. And I think too, with self-love, and I see that a lot um, with my clients is that, you know, their goal is to really show up as really good leaders, be productive. And if we're not loving ourselves, then usually the self-worth is not this at the high level. And so if we're not feeling the self-love, not feeling the self-worth, mm -hmm. then we're also not as confident. We're not, right. you know, it, it's it's a whole spiral. It affects every part of it, our lives. It, it affects everything. So self-love and self-worth is really a foundation of um, being stronger out there. And, and how do you, so how do you, instill a little more self-love and self-care into your day like how do you yeah one increase big one your is, confidence one, one big one is for me and that's just I mean I kind of got pushed into it due to my health issues I have to pay attention to physical health and yeah. so um one version of self-love is also taking care of your physical health um so I think there's mm -hmm. multiple different components so I do do that with that for me that means setting boundaries and knowing, you know, my sleep is important. My exercising is important and, diet. and my diet is important. So 
the self care is yeah. is part of the self love. The other component I think that is oftentimes more challenging, definitely with my clients, is um, the self doubt and the limiting beliefs that pop up. Right when we doubting ourselves and and am I good enough to do this? Can I do this? Right. And it's really about catching yourself on the limiting beliefs that you might have, the beliefs that don't serve you. The most of the times that negative self-talk is not true. It's not the truth. We're creating it, you know, because we we're trying to make sense of a situation and we're creating all these what ifs. But at the at the end of the day, all of those negative thoughts, all those limiting beliefs do not serve us. And we basically push our self-love away with that. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, and that's what, <clears throat> I mean, you and I as a coach really do give different perspective and help our clients to, to also realize, okay, you know what, is that belief really true? Is that really right. helping you is, you know, if, is that self-doubt really valid? Um, you right. know, <clears throat> and shift. And we're going to talk about limiting beliefs in another episode. We're going to dive yes. deep into that. Yes. So that is another component to work on. Um, and there's different techniques. I'm not going to go deeply into that, but there's very uh, different techniques on how you can shift the limiting belief in the moment and also how you build up and, you know, self-love, taking care of yourself and not feeling guilty for taking care of yourself, oh loving yourself. It's okay. You can love yourself, embrace yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it takes a while by all means. It's not like we get that skill like overnight. It does take time to learn and to do Mm -hmm. and to really fully embrace it so well it's kind of like working out right like you need yeah. to be consistent and sometimes you fall off the wagon and then you have to get back up and you know do it yeah. again but you so know, sometimes it, it doesn't work sometimes it does so for me self-love really happens on a physical component on the emotional component on the um you know mental component social component so mm -hmm. yeah so um Mental component for me, I think too, is a lot of times comes back to community, right? That love that you get from somewhere else, you can also use as fuel for your self-love, right? To, to um, at the end of the day, being very aware of the impact, mm -hmm. appreciating that. Um, mm -hmm. When you feel grateful and you appreciate it, helps your self-love as well. So it's really this complex <laughs> web of everything. It is. Coming and I would suggest if you are struggling with finding community, if you're struggling with connecting with people, find somewhere to that you can volunteer. Yep. Um, go to a soup kitchen, go to a women's shelter, try, you know, a hospital, whatever it is, wherever you feel comfortable, wherever you feel your your calling, your, your where your need is. Um, you know, you can go to a school, they always need support. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they do. uh find go volunteer because you're gonna find people there that you can connect with yeah and con contribution contribution yeah. is a is a huge factor on our um for our health as well and that feeling of belonging mm -hmm. can help really in the direction of more love and self-love as well yeah. I've never walked away from a volunteer experience feeling worse. <laughs> you know, we, and I've, I, uh, we ask our, our children to volunteer with us and every time they thank us, mm -hmm. our children thank yep. us for volunteering because they, they enjoy it. They feel the love, they feel the connection. And you're giving back. Yep. Giving back is a big part. It's giving love. Because oftentimes yep. if we give the love, we also yep. will, it will come back. Maybe not directly from those people. It might be coming right. from somewhere else. But whatever we put out there usually comes back to us. <laughs> yep, 100%. Yeah. So want to just touch really quick, not want to go deep into it. But I, I found that very fascinating that there's the different type of love, which we know one is, for example, friendship is a different love than I have mm -hmm. with my husband that I have with my kids and mm -hmm. I found it really fascinating and I'm not going to share too long but there's a uh called the triangular the the triangular theory of love by Robert Sternberg 
and um, people can Google it. It's it's just basically you you have different types of love, and depending on if uh, the foundation of it is usually intimacy, passion, and commitment. And if you only have intimacy, that is more your friendship, right? If you and if you don't have passion and commitment in it, that's usually your friendships. And so there's different. I am not intimate with my friends. <laughs> 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 that would cause a little confusion. <laughs> but, you know, I think it depends on how you define it. <laughs> I, I found it very interesting because it's hard to grasp, right? What What is love? Because it's just everybody interprets love a little differently, too, right? For some people, love is just that passion, that sexual connection and attraction. And for other, it's that long term commitment in a marriage where there might be not as pa much passion anymore, be and and it's a uh, it can be a problem too. That's why marriages may you know fall apart because they right. have worked on keeping up a passion and intimacy, uh, and it becomes only commitment. Because mm -hmm. ideally, love has all those all three of those all three of them. But if anybody wants to, I just wanted to share that since uh, I was kind of fascinated by that that um, framework since it's so hard to grasp what love yeah. is, we, how do we measure it? And that we, because we all feel a little different um, yeah. when receiving love or giving love. So thought it was kind of interesting. So, um, you know, for, for a little uh, C2, you know, look further into that if you want to dig deeper. Very interesting. Okay. Um, but yeah, love, love. We need love. We need love. We need love. We need sure love. There's a song. <laughs> We need love for our social well-being, mental well-being, physical well-being. Love yeah. is really fundamental and we do need to work on it actively, intentionally. And there's so many options. We shared a bunch now. So um, go out and be more loving and receive. Be more love. loving. Connect love with people. Yourself. Love yourself. Yes. So yes. awesome. All right. Okay. Till next time, um, watch our other episodes. We've talked about a lot of great topics. Um, and, you know, values was one I mentioned that, which I think is uh, important too, because when we know our values and we're living in alignment with our values, we can love ourselves more as well and love others. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, check that out. Very, it was a very interesting episode as well. And as always, Thank you, Shannon. I love, love, love <laughs> conversations. <laughs> I love our, our coffee with coaches. Yep. I only had water today. <laughs> <laughs> so check That's out the value thing. video. And until the next episode with coffee with coaches. <laughs>